And is Maddie coming on too? I don't think so. No, uh, Maddie was uh, supposed to be on a call with uh, a couple of investors, and he wanted me to jump in on that call. But I think the call never materialized. So okay. um, it's all good. We'll, we'll make it happen at some point. You know, with that kind of stuff, I always have a lot of patience. I'm like, you know, the people are gonna come when they're gonna come onto the calls and stuff like that. You know, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, a, it's if, as long as we keep working and keep doing what we're doing and keep pushing the, you know, the um, adoption. And I think that this stuff would just fall into place. So I'm not really, you know, it's not, to me, it's not super urgent to be like, oh, you know, these investors need, we need to talk to them immediately. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. They'll, yeah, they'll, but the time's right, they'll, they'll uh, you know what I mean, they'll sit down. They'll, yeah, exactly. So, you know, but it's, it is obviously good relationships to have, you know, with these kind of guys that, you know, are interested in, in you know, furthering the progress a lot faster than, you know, than, uh, you know, the average you know, yes. uh, investor. Because there's going to be a lot of people with money that come to the space and they're going to see it and go, "Holy shit! I want to like build something right now." Um, exactly. And then they're going to be like, "How do, how on earth do I do this?" Yeah. Um, you know what I mean, and so it, yeah, there's going to need to be, I don't know, tenured people that can usher them in the right areas, um, or there's even going to need to be consultancies um, within these verses that that can like be like, you know, what I mean, for this kind of building for X amount of shit, this is how mm -hmm. much it would cost for this time frame. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, if you can start to, um, if you can like, let people know, hey, you know, this is this is exactly what it's gonna be. You know, we, we can knock this out in a week. You know, we can get your uh, event or whatever it's gonna be going in, you know, two weeks or a month or whatever. You know, like when you have yeah. all the tools in place, then people can just go to work. You know, yeah. like, they just they just put the money behind it and it gets everybody. You know, well, so say, yeah, if you're a big enough company and you have like thirteen million dollars to throw at it, be like, make this done in two weeks. Yeah. functional and make it better than anything else yeah um, i mean technically that's possible to do so exactly yep you know but we still we're still working with the team with uh making sure everything runs correctly and i think that's the reason why we haven't necessarily gone like full in you know and saying okay yeah you know um we can do x y and z because we don't know a hundred percent that we can handle like a thousand people on on right. yeah it's, you know? it's finding the devs would be the hardest part of that whole equation exactly but you know we yeah. have a lot of really great devs in the community that are outside of the the team you know like the team is great but uh we have some really good devs in the community i like that the team is you know kind of like putting this creator um creator uh endowment if you will um out there so now if you are creating something that they're looking to you know to fund these things you know fund uh different development teams and stuff like that so that's been really good even if it's not a billion dollars you know it's it's yeah. it's some money it energizes people and, and it gets people wanting to be a part of the community so that's been a, a big deal for sure Perfect. you know and that's like seeing I, I i've seen people like there's a little migration from crypto voxels coming over to dcl i can tell yeah i mean and i'm i'm liking the integration I, you know we have the, the the whatsapp group and i see arthur in there and you know what he's yep. doing you know and that's cool you know i like i you know I don't, I don't, I've never been much for the tribalism within the metaverses. I think the metaverse is just that, like the, it's like a universe. Yeah, I don't want know? to be stuck on one. You nah, mean, like, nah, have we to, should like, be able to just kind of log in pop in this one, pop in that away. one or whatever. And yeah. co-mingle um, with, like, let's say the devs, you know? You got somebody that, that does work. Hey, you, if you're just a guy that does work, why, why wouldn't you be able to do work over here or over there, you know? So, yeah. uh, you know, I think there's, um, there's going to be some, some quality to that. I think Tox Sam has been a big, um, person that, that been able to do that is kind of cross metaverses and uh, I don't know the polygonal mind guys um, yep. they've been able to like you know have um, trying to like intermingle even just the avatars and stuff like that you know I think they just put out a project uh, about avatars um, yes. so you know yeah, it's so many of the spaces avatar thing is taken off too a little bit yeah and that's you know it, again it's going to be something that people it, it energizes people excites people I don't know that um, if I want them to all be the same you know I think they're different the differences is going to bring quality to all of them you yeah. know a little bit you know we have our our thing and they have their thing and you know um but co-mingling especially socially is going to be a big deal you know so, yes i really think so because yeah, you, you don't want to lose friends if we're all in, in the verse and then all of a sudden like for three years someone doesn't use dcl and then you lose touch with them exactly you know, yeah. like that'd be fucked up yeah exactly you know so um I, I like the way that things are going right now i think that maybe in the beginning it was a lot a lot more like little tribalistic, but now we're starting to get to the point of like, you know, people are co-mingling and people are interested in kind of like 
you know, talking with each other and, 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 and uh, trying to, like, make different things happen. Soon enough, we'll see different people doing business together, and that's going to be, you know, fun. I, I've got an event coming up, um, uh, an Axie tournament, where we're going to broadcast in uh, CV here, in Gamers Hub Discord, um, possibly on, like, a more major thing like like Twitch or, uh, or you know, Twitter or something like that as well. And, um, you know, like... Doing stuff like that is going to let people know, like, hey, this, you know, this is a thing, you know, that can, you can you can enjoy from either place, you know, and, and uh, enjoy it in different ways, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah. about that, you know. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk to you about game credits. I, it's something I actually don't know a ton about game credits. So I'd love to, like, I guess we can go over, like, the elevator pitch, and I guess I'll ask more questions going from there. Yeah, 100%. So... Game technically, um, game has been around. Like game was one of the early, early. It's a Litecoin clone technically. Okay. Um, so it's from 2014. Mm-hmm. So it was like one of the, like the first, pretty much ten that was ever like listed on one of the old apps that we showed all of them, all the alts. Okay. Um, and game came out, raised quite a bit of money. Um, it was supposed to be kind of for I don't know, like the the currency for inside for like in in game um, before they knew how this was going to play out. Um, again, this was six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they were going to have it where instead of using Ethereum or Bitcoin when you're inside of a game, you'd use game credits, and that would kind of be the default. Okay. Um, their team raised, I think it was $68 million, to be honest. Um, they raised $68 million in 2017, wow. and then they came out with Mobile Go, which was like a split from the same parent company but a different project, okay. and it was the same thing, only for mobile gaming. Um, and mobile gaming at the time... They were getting prepared for when the phones could handle mobile gaming, mm-hmm. um, when, when the chips were good enough. Mm-hmm. And then I think the money they had raised, the time after, like at the peak and then the, with the crash, yeah, um, yeah. there was a lot of internal issues going on. Yeah. And mobile go just dissolved completely mm. um, and never transpired to anything really. Wow. And then game credits stuck around, did stuff, had a huge community, and then just kind of sat there doing nothing lethargically for a year and a half, two years. Um, and then about eight months ago, we started talking to them. Um, we being Nova Token. Mm. Um, so Nova Token was a project that started also in 2017, raised 1.8 million. Okay. Um, it was based in Seattle. They got about 85% of the project done. And then when Bitcoin crashed, they hadn't reserved in fiat. Mm. So they kind of took the hit with that and then couldn't complete the project. Okay. Um, so Jason Cassidy and myself um, came on board with Nova Token, mm-hmm. maybe even a year uh, maybe 14 months ago and then about six seven months ago is when we started talking to game credits and then we kind of acquired them about four months ago so we just wanted the branding from game credits because of the ticker is game which is fantastic yeah Yeah. Um, as far as the community they were very strong we got all their social channels um, some of their old team members to assess for a certain period of time with us with the you know the integrations there and then as far as um, the tech, the tech was all built. Um, Nova branded his game, and then we, we launched last Wednesday. Mm. Um, so that That's was pretty awesome. much uh, about two years in the making. Um, so game's purpose is somewhat a competitor to engine. Um, okay. There's aspects to it that, that are different or some that engine doesn't offer. Mm. Um, but as far as um, the, the, the peak um, things, the peak highlights would be the rewards portal. Um, so there's going to be games in there right now. There's only seven, but because we just launched, the, 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 there should be upwards of 30 to 50 in okay. the coming year. Um, so once those games are in there, you can stake your game credits on those games. Mm. And then people playing in the games, whether it be the leaderboards or the champions, um, whatever else, you split payouts. Um, so you're almost, you can stake on your favorite esports champion, mm. um, on them themselves, and, and their play Ooh, okay. equates to your rewards. Wow. Um, or, yeah, or you can stake on your favorite game, and then if you know there's a top ten leaderboard on there, and you've picked four of them, um, you would get the payout for you know your, the kind of the trifecta. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a number of different aspects of the rewards portal. Um, we're still figuring out exactly what we can do. We know the basics of it, but I think there's a lot more to it. Um, so can you uh, integrate other games that are not like necessarily running on game token, or like, like let's say uh, uh... anything anything ERC twenty. Yeah. Um, okay. So, All right. Um, because we're in ERC twenty as well, so anything that's in ERC twenty standard token, gotcha. um, we can kind of um, work with in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be in the typical sense of a game. Um, so think of if you want to reward, um, 
your users, you know, whoever has played the most in the last 30 days, mm -hmm. maybe the top 10 would get an NFT. Um, it doesn't do anything. It's just an NFT. And then that NFT might, if they have, you know, um, a chat with like one of their uh, champions, you might be able to log in and, and they'll have them view, sit and talk. Oh, okay. um, so there can be that. Other games will likely generate skins or weapons or one of a kind items yeah, yeah. that a lot of people will technically probably put on the open of like the second market. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not that they're going to want them. They're going to actually try and do it for, I mean, to try and get these for, for resale value. Um, and then as far as game itself, we have an SDK for developers to tie into and they're incentivized because if they have game, mm -hmm. they hold game and stake on their own game. They take part in that rewards as well. Okay. Um, okay. So it's kind of a win-win for them. Plus we're kind of sharing our communities. So any game that comes into our portal, um, by default, they're going to on the website be like, you know, check out game credits. You can stake your, your tokens there. Mm -hmm. um, so they're gonna, there's going to be community coming in that's new to us. And then as well, some of our community is going to want to check out them because they're going to be playing their game and staking on it. So this is something you can get on uh, Uniswap? Um, not as of yet. Um, MetaMask and Uniswap are two that we want to be default. Yeah, um, right yeah. now, Edge, we are, um, Abra, and a couple of the other um, kind of more custodial wallets yeah. than we are. Um, but uh, but right now we are working on, on, on being kind of default to both of us. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's super interesting. I've got to go a little bit deeper um, when I when I probably get off this call and, and go a little bit deeper and see what we can do with that. Um, now, yeah, so because I, I, I'm pretty heavily involved with Axie Infinity at this point uh, as far as like a competitive game. And mm -hmm. uh, I know we've, we've definitely have a pretty good community over there when it comes to like um just competitiveness isn't <laughs> in general um yeah. so i think that that would be a really cool uh idea to be able to stake a uh, game let's say on your favorite guild or even your you know who you think is going to take the season something like that you know yes yeah because actually does i'd have to say just by hearing the community um, actually is definitely the forefront of of who's engaged the most who likes it who spreads mm -hmm. the word and brings new users in. Yeah, um, yeah. So those are those are like exactly who we're looking for yeah, to be, yeah. be in the portal, mm -hmm. um, especially to share communities because they would definitely bring over a ton of people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get a chance to talk to Gho's in a couple of weeks here. And, uh, <clears throat> he's on the team, and uh, it's gonna be a good conversation. I I, uh, I haven't uh, got a chance to pick his brain like correctly, like I want to, you know. Um, yeah. Currently, uh, there's some crazy spike in their uh in their love potions what they call and so basically um you get these potions every time you, you win a you win a match and um it's like you get them in order to breed another axie you know that's just how it works and, and you have a certain amount of breeds per axie and uh i don't know what's going on right now but some crazy is going on it's like it's up like fifteen hundred percent in the last two days or something like that. So. And and is there is there like a scarcity factor to them, or is it just people are realizing to breed, or is someone cornering the market? I think somebody's cornering the market. I think some some yeah. something weird is going on because they can be minted, and it's it, you know I was watching I was in the Axie uh, uh, general chat last night, and I'm like they're talking about uh, they're basically talking about um, how it's weird that somebody's pumping that because it's not like the native token you know it's like yeah. it's something that's minted every day by every player you know and uh and for some reason some group has decided to pump that so uh, and are some better than others that they're like are they buying the better of the of the bulk of them or no i mean no the it's just they're just like you know like a fungible token you know it's like a it's just you, you you get slp and slp and slp and then you know you can you can breed other axes but right now there's just crazy pump going on um, and so it's just, it's just one of these funny things where, you know, uh, I, I got to imagine that at some point it's going to come back because there's no real reason for it to stay up that high. Um, mm -hmm. but I did take advantage. I mean, if I had a bunch of SLP and I got rid of it, you know, got a couple of dollars off of it. So not mad. Totally you, as well. you know, yeah, <laughs> it's one of those, one of those yeah. things. Uh, <laughs> so let's, uh, moving along with like gaming, uh, the DCL moonshot we've had over the past like a couple weeks or a week now. Right. Um, and we we've, we've uh, seen like competitive gaming in Decentraland. Now um, we've seen that that, that as, you know as fun as it's been, it's been really tough to actually um, the functionality of, of doing competitive gaming in DCL. Um, one of the things that conversations we've been having lately is uh, 
about a client and uh, what do we whether we think that a client is necessary in DCL. Um, how do you feel about that as an in general, just like a general thought? Um, well, I know we had to have one. Um, we had our own because when we were live in DCL December, and mm. they didn't go live till February. Yeah, yeah. So when we were directing people to go to our building, mm. technically they couldn't see it yet because DCL didn't offer it. Oh. Um, so we had our own server in there that you could go into. Um, and I don't know, I think it'd be a good idea, especially for something like that, because the trick was uh, FINRA Amber mm. worked the best. Uh, but again, when you got in there, and if you move the wrong way or others jumped in all of a sudden quickly, mm. it kind of froze in some cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to refresh. And then Zeus Green was working decently. But by the time the machines populated and you're able to walk over by yourself, mm. they were out of stock anyway. Because everyone in Finner Amber grabbed them. <laughs> um, so they, yeah, for competitive sports, like it's hard to even do kind of common things right now. Like if you're really, if you want to run around, you know, seamlessly without any buffering, yeah. that's kind of hard depending on what's populating. Especially yeah. if you're in like a very busy spot with like yeah. huge stuff going on and lights, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, which is understandable, but at the same time, like that that really can't like once that's fixed, um, and that's that's a, like a you know a pure experience that's, that's never an issue again. Um, and then they work on the sports aspect of it. Um, but again, like look at our video games. Like when I was a kid and I had like an Intellivision and Atari, um, they were like they were complete garbage. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, even yeah, what they yeah. were like twenty years ago, like yeah. they were really really bad. Yeah. Um, but again, that's all they offered. So too bad is like don't play it or do play it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the people who play it and be like, okay, this would have been better, and like offer all their feedback. People who were engaged with it, mm -hmm. yes, it was like painful. It wasn't fun as as of course something like new would be. Mm -hmm. um, but by those people playing and giving that feedback, that's how it's going to become in five years way better. Yeah, exactly. And I think that I think the same thing. Like you got so many people here that are really dedicated to um, the growth of Decentraland where, you, you know, you, you're going to see people um, giving the correct feedback. And like, you know, the team has been real responsive. And that's the one thing I will say about that is that um, every time we have an issue, it, it seems like a long time to us because we have no patience, you know. Um, yeah. but like really they're on top of it and, and in a couple of weeks or something, you know, something gets changed and things get better, you know? So I think that, uh, that we're on the right path as it comes to that, but I definitely do feel like a client would help the whole situation as a whole. Um, we got a chance to talk to Esteban the other day, um, yeah. myself and Maddie and, uh, and, um, Anorak set that up and basically in will, um, and basically like. The idea for us is like we don't really need higher graphics levels or more triangles just now, but more importantly is, is definitely about just j the functionality of the, of the game. Period. You know. Yes. Um, so that's something I think that you know we could really benefit from just being able to walk around correctly and you know just being able to uh, to interact with each other and, and have all the the, um, the functions of the the world work. You know. And then yes. we can kind of take it from there as a community, I feel. You know, I think that that's... Yeah, because, um, like, prior to VR, prior to, like, all that other, like, crazy stuff, like mm -hmm. flying or anything else they want to implement. Yeah, or yeah. Or even, even, like, even expanding it. Like, I don't think that should be a necessity right now. There's there's, there's so much empty land still. Um, like, I don't know. I think they should really... I, I think all the verses should put a freeze on their land. I know they're all doing the exact opposite and expanding it, which is strange. Um, but, <laughs> I mean, it's not even from an investment standpoint. Like... Make sure it's built up cool before you start. Like, don't don't oversell it um, before it's. You know what I mean? Like underdeveloped. Yeah, I'd I'd like I'd like to see like decentralized. I'd like to see. I mean, not really expand the land too much, or at all, in my opinion. But if you are, if if we were going to expand the land, I'd like this to, to like our whole map to look like a city, you know, um, like yes. a very like congested city. To the point yeah, where it's it, like, okay, now we need more land. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, not there's nowhere where there's barren land still available, and everyone's like Jones to, to exactly, start. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I want people yeah. renting off of other people before we're even thinking about getting a new piece of land. You know, um, yeah. but I think these are things that we're gonna deal with with the DAO as well. Um, the DAO implementation is gonna be um, something that I, I think is gonna be helpful uh, because right now it's kind of like everybody just bombards the team with you know questions and, yeah. and uh and comments you know and it's yeah. like you know it's 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 good and bad you know it's good that they, they, you know that, that we get to talk to them first of all you know but it's it's bad in a sense that like it's like they're in the middle of working on something and then they're getting bombarded with a new issue and a new issue and a new issue and you know these these con uh these these uh conversations get like real hot 
and then you're like you know give these guys a minute to work you know if you've ever done any coding you know it's it's hard to do some I coding say, i was gonna say it's really easy as a user to be like come on man figure it out hurry up I mean, if you saw the work involved, you mean you'd be like, "Oh shit, man, take your time," because I know that's a ridiculous amount of shit you have to do. That's what I'm saying, and it's not just like the physically like like writing the code. You got to figure it, especially if you're those guys. You're not like like they're not. They wrote the docs. You know, like, yeah. I got the docs. You know, I can that, look up. This is all you know? new. Like there, there's nothing to look on. Like this is completely all like I mean, uncharted places they're they're trying to build. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like think of how many bugs are just. Like simple, stupid shit would take forever to figure out, and that's with a team of very smart people. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, kind of boss talks about like how uh, when he was building the casino, he was kind of like dealing with uncharted waters where nobody had tried to integrate, say, a Matic, or you know, yeah. nobody had uh, really been able to make their own games that ran and stuff. Like, and he was doing some really advanced stuff, and it, and it's it's you know when you're doing that kind of thing it takes a lot of like serious thinking I, it's hard enough for me to do any coding and when the things are given to me like people are telling me exactly how to do it i'm like still hard yeah. you know like it's, totally. you know because i'm new i'm newer to into it so yeah. i'm not like a, i definitely don't have a coding background or anything of the sort so yeah, you, know, right. you know but I, i've been able to do enough to be able to get my tv to work so that's cool you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's important totally. and soon yeah so i i saw they they posted that uh um, Josie posted it, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, that, yes, Async Art came out with an app that if you if you have like Apple TV or whatever else, um, you just download it, mm -hmm. and then you can sync it with all your art. So your art will just play consecutively, Ooh. and you set it so you can be like every fifty minutes, every every thirty seconds, yeah. whatever you want. It'll switch and have all your art on there. Yeah, it's and that's what I talked about um, with uh, I forget who it was. I think it was Leandro from uh, Pixel Chain. But it was yeah. basically like the idea that, because I know that we can update things, right? So I had me and um, a guy named Cryptonaut, excuse me, we made a, a ETH gas station sign, and it just looked like a gas station sign, but it's, yeah. it, it, it shows the price of ETH and it updates. And uh, right. what, what I was saying to him and, you know, just generally during Art Week was like, you know, if we were able to, let's say on your website, whether it was Pixel Chain or whether it was So Rare or, or Super Rare or whether it was uh, Makers, um, help me out. <laughs> Makers, uh, Makers Place, Place yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, any of these websites that say they had a, a latest or featured section, that section could possibly be um, be kind of like showed in the uh, in the art gallery. So let's say you had like the NFT itself, but they they just updated so you know different NFTs kind of showed in that same floor let's call it just one floor of the building you know and these things could change every 10 15 minutes so it would just not get stale you just always have new stuff you know yeah it'd and be like I, a huge Times square billboard like just with with art on it it'd be exactly yeah and that's yeah. you know I, I really think that that could be something as well as um me and cody kind of kicked it about um about, about glb art um about uh 3d like model art and yes. it's something that I've been like really wanting to dive into a little bit. I mean, it's I, I don't do a ton of uh, Blender. I do a little bit, but not enough. Um, yeah. You know, but I've uh, you know become pretty good friends with uh, KJ Walker and uh, Fran, uh, her partner over there, Low, uh, low Poly, uh, I think low poly models org. I think is, is their website. And um, okay. we've done a few metas together, and I just you know I think that three D art is like gonna be a thing. It would be like let's say the next crypto art, you know, when you have the metaverses um, Super up and running. Rare kicked it off there too. What was this? Super rare last week started offering that or like yeah yeah yeah. So, so I'd love pieces, to see some of the pieces now. The only thing is the only drawback to that technically, um, I have a decent computer as well. I have, I have a couple of different ones I've tried it on, mm -hmm. um, and there's not really much of a, a difference to be honest. But the the old super rare prior to them doing that, oh, somewhat man. took a while to load. The yeah. new one in some cases like. I'm sitting there for like a minute and a half waiting for the 3D rendering uh, to, 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 to load I so I can actually it, yeah. check it out. Yeah, I believe um, and I don't know, in that case, it, I know, it dulls the user experience because it's, it, it's like very tedious. Yeah. Um, again, it's like something new and I'm sure they're going to figure it out and make that faster. Well, yeah, um, we right have now, um, in the Central Land, we have like a, a limit on tries. They call it tries or poly count, you know? Yes. Um, so it can render because, I mean, it would if we were just like, oh. like, like uh, I was talking to Jesse from Bullion Next the other day, right? And he's got like, um, like these super high quality uh, coins on his website, yeah. and that's what they, you know, that's that's their uh, gold back um, model, yeah. and it's they're nice, they're really really nice. 
But I was saying to him, I was like, you know, if you could come up with a low poly version of this, this could go into Decentraland. But having it so high poly would make it like your whole scene would be a single coin, you know? Yes. And you wouldn't want that. We had to tell ours too, because I think, I think we're at five triangles and, and ours were at 13. Um, mm. So we had to dull them down too, because we, when we made the Ross avatars, the NFTs, mm -hmm. um, and then we tried to take them to DCL and they wouldn't work. Exactly. Um, so we had to yep. dull them down like three or four times. And I was like, shit, man, I wanted to like improve them, <laughs> not degrade them, man. <laughs> well, you know, there's ways to do it though. There's, um, what you do is you, they call it, there's like a tool called decimate. And what you do is you decimate it, um, which brings the, the number of tries down. But then you also yeah. kind of um, work with the, uh, the texture. And so the texture is going to bring out your detail. And that's that's really how you do it. Um, I'm not you an expert. Slow down it. the surroundings around the object, or the object itself. So let, let's say let's say you, you build it in high poly, right? Yeah. And then when you, you you'll decimate it, and then you'll kind of like let's, for lack of better words, take a picture of the whole texture of it, right? Okay. So now the texture has what it would look like um, with the high poly, mm -hmm. and then when it goes down to the low poly, then you kind of wrap that that texture around it, and then you can get a lot more okay, of the details you still so it, it appears to still look high quality exactly yeah 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 and this is like a, a technique i forget what they call it it's something uh mapping your normals i believe um huh. something like that because yeah, um, that mapping wow when when our devs show me and they show me like a shoe and it's just all weird pieces stretched out you mean because they're all like strong i was like yeah no. yeah yeah just listen, like, yeah, don't worry i'll put it back into the shoe and i'm like i don't know how the hell you <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the, the, yeah the computer does it that's what that's really what that no, no, yeah, 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 like the, the computer the programs are expensive and they do it they take the work out of it exactly but you know like when i was learning that um it's just a huge pain in the ass because if you get it wrong you literally just spent an hour getting something wrong because it takes yeah, a while to render it yeah, yeah, so if you did, like, you know, like I, you know, I was, again, I was, you know, rendering these things, and then they'd come up, like, a black picture, and I'm like, oh, are you fucking serious? You know, like, I just spent yeah. an hour getting this completely incorrect, and I got to go back to the drawing board, figure out where I messed up, which I don't know, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. No um, now, on the side of digitals, I know we're talking about digitals a little bit. Um, now, I know you guys got... Uh, wearables coming out now with this uh with the new fashion show and the and the, the wearables licenses that come out um i'm pretty excited about that uh is there anything you can kind of kind of like let us in on um so i can let you know um kind of the garments that we chose sure. um so sure. we were we were allowed six different items to make mm -hmm. um and there was a kind of a list of maybe 10 to choose from mm -hmm. and we picked six of them um there's a hundred of each that, that's made so they are same as the jerseys Yep. Um, DCL gets 40 of them um, okay. right off the hop, which is agreed. Yep. And we get the other 60. Yep. Um, so to do as you choose, I'm sure some teams might release them slowly to build up some demand and some scarcity. Sure. Um, others might just want to unload them and kind of move on to something else. Yep. Um, I know some teams have decided to go the outfit route where they have, you know, boots, pants, gloves, mm -hmm. and kind of like a jacket, <laughs> a helmet, yeah, um, yeah. things like that. Yeah. We've done six just different garments okay um, we okay. did include um, a dress for women um, wow. we've also got um, a mask um, nice. for DCL they seem to be something that people like in DCL yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah sure. we've got a pair of shoes a pair of shorts a shirt a, a hoodie and I believe that is is what we've got That's awesome. um, so they will be dropped technically on the 24th of February at the fashion show the which fashion is at show, the Genesis yeah. Plaza zero zero yeah yeah coordinates and then after that, they right now we're doing. No one can tell when they're in there right now in Central Line, but on the back end, mm -hmm. we're kind of revamping things in their digital building. Okay. Um, so it's going to look nice. completely different. Nice. Um, on floor, on like pretty much everything except for maybe the very top floor, mm -hmm. um, which eventually, hopefully, will have DNN streaming through it. Nice. nice. Um, so um, that will be changed and should be done probably August first, awesome. and then right around the fashion show, right after that, mm -hmm. um, and then we will have a storefront in there that will highlight um, all of our clothing you can buy right there. Um, as well as all of Ross's avatars and then the three items we have. Nice. So it'll be a, a full functioning storefront. And then I think we'll be growing that. Um, there's going to be s some kind of meetup and, uh, and presentation space in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd like to start more engaging the community and having meetups. Nice. Um, we're going to be kind of offering a, a PO, POAP experience as well mm -hmm. um, at our building. So we'll be able to go claim something, sign in a guest book, um, you know, obtain an NFT. Um, and then kind of, uh, and that'll let you into the building. 
Um, so, so yeah, there's a lot of different things we're going to be doing, but I think the commerce aspect is where we're kind of heading. Mm -hmm, um, we would mm -hmm. like to get some advertising going on, mm -hmm. um, and then definitely start holding meetups or even, um, you know, kind of gatherings outside of the place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, that's uh, going to be really great. I think for the community as an, in general, um, quick question. Now we, we talk about the, the way to the different people have different ideas of how to release their wearables. Um, I know I talked to uh, Chestnut Brews and Rob Dixon, and they're gonna, you know, they have a game, so they're they're gonna do like um, it's gonna be a part of their game, like yeah. almost a prize. Um, and so you're looking more to to more like a a storefront is what you're saying, right? Um, yeah, we're going more storefront. Um, we thought of originally we were gonna have like where you completed some things and, and bail Ross out of jail. Um, that, <laughs> like it, it would be fun from a gaming aspect. Yeah. Um, thinking about it from a real life standpoint. Um, I know I, it, it's just, it's kind of mocking the situation he's in and right, I didn't want to go right, down that road. Right, um, and I was like, yes, was, I, I get the gaming aspect of it. Yes, it would draw attention. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of want to bring different attention to that other than like you laughing at Ross is out of jail. And right, then he just right. goes back in there again for someone right, else. Because he's not going to um, actually so, get out of jail if you, if you. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. We, we'd like to do something that like, yeah, in real life <laughs> that we could do that, you know, and have him, have a changed life experience in, yeah. in, realistically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going down that road. Um, and again, like we're going to be doing like pro bono things where, you know, try it out, see what it's like, um, mm -hmm. get a feel for it and maybe having open houses mm -hmm. where people can kind of get a feel for it, um, see what presentations are like. And mm -hmm. then hopefully um, I just, I was one who went to a lot of conferences um, when that was still kind of going on yeah, um, yeah. over the last say three years. Um, and I, I really enjoyed them. It was a perfect spot. That's how from an investment standpoint, from a networking standpoint, yeah. from keeping your ear on the ground and knowing what's going south and what's like hot and coming up. Mm -hmm. um, from all of that, um, that like I got tons of information that's extremely valuable there, and mm -hmm. made connections that kind of you know are, are help me get to where I am, and, and right now help me continue to build things. Exactly. Um, so I, I don't know, I like that needs to be replicated because there's a lull. Like yeah, we're all getting together, but it's in smaller groups right now. Mm -hmm. There's not hundreds of us getting together at one time consistently, yeah. um, and, and I don't know that needs to kind of start happening. Um, yeah. So whether it be where. You know, one week it's in CV, one week it's in Sandbox when it goes live, one week it's in Somnium, and like almost on a monthly basis yeah. across the verses, like people are gathering. Because um, if it becomes a norm and, and there's a tipping point where all the important people are pretty much attending them or one of them on a, on a monthly basis, it's going to draw like kind of the masses to go there. Yeah, um, and, and even seeing like with the WIPs, faster. with Matthew setting up those WIPs, um, mm -hmm. been able to see like, you know, the with consistency, people start to come often, you know? So yes. I think there's there's, there's well, something even myself, to that. Like like, I'm happy that I started for the art week. I, before I'd go check it out, I'd go look at our building. I'd go like you know someone said, oh there's a nightclub. I'd go look at it and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I never like spent time in there. Exactly. Um, during art week, I spent every single day in there. Um, sometimes a couple hours. Yeah. And then yeah. for the soccer, I definitely spent every day and hours in there. Exactly. Um, so if they continue to have events like long like you know like three five kind of day events mm -hmm. um here and there is nice but if you get in the habit of that like where i know a day you know almost every day that i'm for an hour i'm going to be in there because something's going on mm -hmm. if that becomes your norm that's a great thing for for dcl and everything else yeah. um, if it's something where this dies down and then people start going again like once a week and then it drops off mm -hmm. um, you know, in, with all this momentum i hope this continues on with something else after the fashion show you know if something else kicked off that'd be awesome yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to get to the point as well where we have like just multiple things going on. You know, I had um, uh, Ture, he had uh, kind of got in touch with me a couple of days ago and he was saying, you know, I'm going to throw this uh, art gallery event. You know, I just didn't want to step on anybody's toes. And I'm like, listen, man, throw your event. Let's all throw events as much as we can and like almost like overload the system because, you know, um, it's going to be better to have more stuff going on than less, in my opinion. You know, I, yes, I mean, obviously, it, yeah. you know, we're, we're not trying to like, you know, uh, spread it too thin but at the same time like you really gotta you know kind of go for that goal which is i think you know like really like having a lot of stuff going on you know yes yeah because in the oculus store when i first got the oculus say i don't know in november of 2019 mm -hmm. i was looking in there and i was like well there's nothing happening here this is no fun um in, <laughs> in like vr chat and alt space there was like i go in there's like i don't know it was a meditation thing next wednesday i mean there's like well, that's lovely <laughs> um so and then I went back in, like, say, in February, and I was like, okay, now there's, like, a full board of things for the week. And then come, like, March, and when, like, everyone's in lockdown, mm -hmm. there there was every day there was, like, 35 things going on. Yeah. Um, and then you started seeing, like, the masks kind of coming into there. And exactly. you go into one thing, and there'd be 
45 people and then you get kicked out because there's too many of them mm. um so that's pretty cool but that became the norm so mm. if dcl keeps that up um it would keep people like myself and people who are enjoying being in there and checking things out and learning um it would keep us engaged and then again if that if, if we're doing that for a couple months straight that'll be, become like our routine and part of our daily activity yeah yeah exactly i think that once people start to have kind of like their social interaction going on around here then yeah. you would just naturally go there just like I, you know i hang out with uh, my pixel buster friends like uh, my guys i got a, a axie team uh really yeah. just a video game team i guess a blockchain uh gaming team and like you know uh we hang out in xbox live chats constantly you know that's how we like interact on the regular like often you know now if that interaction could be in here it'd be a little bit more real as well you'd have your avatar you know you, you can go somewhere you can interact with the environment and you know still have that kind of that voice chat and ability like we were talking the about voice is key like, yeah. like i like when i couldn't go to the conferences and a whole bunch got canceled that i didn't mm -hmm. get to attend mm -hmm. um some of us like sky and a couple others um yeah. that, that i used to see at the conferences yeah. we'd go into vr chat with pablo sky and i was like at least i can hear your voice i mean you stay beside me it just it, it, it's not the same at all yeah. but it's way better than us just like zooming or doing whatever like i know i feel i feel like more engaged with you right now exactly, um yeah, so exactly. it was i know it was it was a decent experience yeah definitely we had, you know we spoke with esteban the other day about that as well like just that aspect of you know um voice chat and and what would it look like the best because it, you know voice chat just as is would not probably work out that well like right now let's say we're vo we have voice chat available and i've got 20 people talking right now you know that would just yeah, sound so like a mess moderator you have to be on the ball because you have to silence it and like unmute people exactly um, yeah having sidebars is cool but then if you don't have a private chat you get some kid come over and just start yipping and, and he stands beside you and you can't get rid of him exactly. um, so there, <laughs> yeah, there is yeah. other issues with shit like that yeah yeah um again i'm sure they'll figure it out because again everyone just like was stuck at home and they're like shit. well this is the best we've gotten it's awful um, <laughs> like, um cardano just had one that was like literally held maybe in like the asia or something like that and mm -hmm. i saw some clips of it there were stills um but it was by far the best vr it looked like you were at like a fucking real conference mm -hmm. it, it was it looked like you were in vr walking around a conference with mm -hmm. booths with other people walking past you like in yeah, real life yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty crazy um so if they can mimic that and like everyone like eventbrite or whoever else would all have venues like that um, then that would be a much better experience. Yeah, that was cool. Actually, we had uh, we had a couple guys, uh, venture capitalist guys, uh, Michael Gord and Enzo, and um, the guy. Well, from, Gordo was uh, good buzz. I've known Gordo for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I met him through your through your uh, WhatsApp. And um, yeah. So we, when they when they came through, they they had um, put the event on Eventbrite, and yeah. it was really like a different experience. You had so many people that were like very new to the situation. You had a whole bunch was of the guest event accounts. Chain you know? or Eventbrite. 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 Okay, because yeah, there's an event chain too that that Ashton Addison runs, and it's a mm. blockchain event, oh, okay. right? Yeah, um, and he's trying to take that off, and I just didn't know because sometimes Michael Gord uses them as well. Yeah, no, no, it's Eventbrite, I believe, and um, and like I said, you had all these like new people that were running on guest accounts, you know, and this is how yeah. you you're gonna be able to get like the adoption we're looking for, you know. When somebody yeah. comes in and then when they're blown away by the experience, you know, um, I would say, you know, in, during our growing pains, you know, we're, we're, you know, you run into this situation where somebody shows up and they're like, I don't know, man, this is hard to walk around, you know, uh, this and that. But then when, when somebody does come in and have that really like the beautiful experience, you know, and they come in and like, oh, this is cool. You know, people are chatting in the side and, and stuff like that then that's when you're going to see them want to stick around or even like this past like we've seen with the moonshot that like the the wearables have been like something that oh my god people, that was like that was like under a minute they were they were gone that was well, they're stupid. flying yeah that, not, not only they were, were flying, paying more but... gas than they were reselling them for which doesn't <laughs> <laughs> right um but but like if 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 you had dcl on mobile accessible that mm -hmm. would like be a huge game changer which i'm sure is coming one day sure, sure. Um, and even like right now, like personally, I don't ever link with anybody who's a guest uh, because I feel that they're not <laughs> serious enough or that they're yeah. just a skim. Yeah, um, yeah. So I only link with people with the name. Now, yeah. if DCL, so you couldn't go in there and just sit there and, and like kind of milk the system. Mm -hmm. But if DCL had it where if you went in and had like five objectives and had to find five things and like touch points that you were at and they know that, mm -hmm. um, and then you can get 100 mana for free so you can right. make your own name, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that would be good because some people don't have ETH they're like 12 and then mm -hmm. their parents aren't going to know what the fuck they're talking about right and even when they ask them to buy it so if the mm -hmm. kid could get mana by doing something 
to at least become a person in the game that's recognizable yeah then they have their own branding they can yeah. start building or you could just give them the, like the mint them the name itself rather than even you know because you gotta remember is it the just, yeah just the they mana, say good mana just say like you get a name now you know, yeah 100%. yeah yeah and, and you could because the it's reason being is, the mana, is that so they have cost that, as well that, that, um, I don't know if when, when we go to Mat when we go to Matic, things will be different on that side when it comes to like being able to do something like that because right now, you know, let's say Decentraland would just have to front the the ETH cost and maybe over time that might yes. get crazy, but you know, um, yeah, but maybe when we go to Matic, this this stuff can be like kind of like not an issue, you know? Yeah, I was gonna say if hopefully if it goes like to, like so to speak off chain, um, then yeah, things like that can happen because gas won't be an issue. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'm pretty excited to see where, where where and when that happens, you know, um, how that's going to look. You know, we've been talking about um, kind of in our side chats and people that have been trading wearables for a while now. You know, what is, what is it going to look like when, when you can go into the trading building and actually, like, that means something. Like, you really can trade there, um, you know, your stuff on the Matic sidechain and it, like, you know, seamless transactions. Um, well, it would be like it, an automated Bitcoin center back in the day when, when Nick uh, Spano said it. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be something that um, could possibly drive a whole different uh, kind of activity here, you know. And I was talking to somebody else about it, saying like, what if you could also do that with other NFTs? So like, not just DCL NFTs, but like, you know, you, you can come in here and uh, you know trade axes with me and stuff like that, you know. Actually, um, with Digital, where we have a new DAP coming out, um, mm -hmm. I think August fourth. Um, and on that DAP, you can hold your portfolio. You can buy and sell your land and your art. Um, you can, you can um, all in-game currency, so sand, cubes, um, mana, okay, okay. Uh, anything else, um, color if, through Uniswap. Yeah. Um, so that'll all be done through our app. Um, so it'll kind of be um, where you can hold your portfolio as an artist. You can drop your work. Um, I have NFT.eth, so mm -hmm. you could be you know Frankie at NFT.eth, yeah, yeah. um, things like that. So we're going to do the subdomains with that through this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so the DAP itself will be right now. You can just buy a couple of things from Digital on it. Yeah. Um, after that, you'll be able to it'll be almost like a land art um, in-game currency. Um, yeah. Kind of that's that'll be your wallet. That's interesting. Yeah, it's going to be helpful for the metaverse. I think that that something like that would be helpful just for the cross metaversing. You know, I think that that's we we have to be going that way. You know, we have to be uh, reaching for that because you, you um, have to make it where like someone could be like. Hey man, just download this app, and I'll just transfer your land if you if you just send me the, the BTC or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. it has to be like extremely like non painful. It, it, yeah, exactly that. You know, you don't want to be all right. You know, jump through this hoop, jump through that hoop. You know, now when when you're when you're like this right now, like when you're when you're in this position where you're like, okay, you know, it's it's like that right now because the way it is, you know. But yeah, you know, um, it's because you're early, and I tell people all the time, it's because you're early is the reason why. You know all this is like that where you're paying you know crazy gas fees or yeah. um you know whatever it may be it's a little bit painful you know but you know it's because you're early when when the time comes pre -mount you're, gonna, gox you're gonna remember being early my bitcoin <laughs> what was this like pre-mount gox it was near impossible to fucking buy bitcoin unless you oh knew somebody who had some you yeah. mean or you're mining it like you mean it was it was really yeah. really hard to obtain now it's extremely easy you go to cvs and get it you yeah but yeah like back in the day it was fucking difficult I can't even imagine. Like I had a friend who um who was gifted Bitcoin uh when it was being mined in two thousand and nine, yeah. and then um he held it for a while, and then he felt so uncomfortable having it because he thought he was gonna lose it. So somebody yeah. offered him six thousand dollars for it, and he, he took it. It was like a hundred and fifty Bitcoin, you know. Oh, wow. yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. So he, but he was happy to get rid of it, thinking that. What he's like, he, well, he told me he was like, man, think about what your computer looked like in 2013, and whether you thought that you could hold yeah, no money on that computer like with any kind of confidence, you know. And I, I get it, man. I guess I get it. But you'd be a millionaire right now, man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh yeah. man, those early days of Bitcoin must have been crazy. Uh, I know you were involved since a long time now, right? I have a receipt for seventy-seven dollars um, for buying a Bitcoin. Wow. Um, yeah and then i remember i was happy because it went to like 240 and then it went back down to like 130 and i was like oh no what have i done <laughs> i mean i was like i was like maybe this isn't what i thought and then i yeah. watched it and then the more i read and the more i saw in the banking system i was like no this is exactly what i should have done with it and then when ethan bachman uh, the, the ceo of um cosmos and tendermint when he told me about each ico 
I was like, what is it? And he goes, it's like Bitcoin only is different. You can do more with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can like, it can, it's for business and stuff. And mm-hmm. I was like, that sounds really interesting. Um, and because I'm based near Toronto where, where Ethereum was born, mm-hmm. um, I heard of it be- like kind of in, in passing. I was like, well, shit, this is like not the first time I've, I've heard that word. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I looked it up, um, it was something that was, you know, coming and there, there was all this hype about it. And there wasn't many projects yet. So mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean, there was like three oh, things yeah. that was being hyped yeah, at the yeah. time. Yeah, um, yeah. So I was like, okay. So I remember being like, shit, should, I, should I spend my Bitcoin to buy, buy into this? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to. So I did, um, thankfully. I did um, mm-hmm. in their ICO, and then the funny thing is, I had it, and I it was sitting in Bitrix, um, and when it was in Bitrix is when the split happened in sixteen after mm-hmm. the Dow hack. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, one day I woke up and I was like, "What the hell?" I was like, "I, I not only have the ETH that I had, but I also have this ETC." And I was like, "What is it?" Like I was like, "I don't know what this is. I didn't buy it." And then I looked into it. And I was like, "Shit, this is a split that happened. I took advantage of it." And I was like, wow, man, this is like, this fucking just dro- dropped into my lap. From the yeah, yeah. Um, those times were like, they were crazy, man. And then a couple months later, um, Bitcoin Cash came out. Bitcoin Cash, and yeah. Like, yeah and I'm like, shit, it happened again. I was like, this is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, too good to be true because that never happened to like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's times it did. Yeah, and that's, I think that the, like, that is what gives like somebody like you the vision of like, let's say we were talking about, um, you know, kind of like these, these, these jerseys, you know? Um, and you know, the, the jerseys that come out, coming out as gas fees, and then, you know, you can go and you can pick up up at whatever the amount that they're being sold at right now, but you know, you have this vision, like you've seen it happen before where things go crazy in price. And so if you hold on to something like that for a little while, you know, you can see it go crazy. Like when I was buying, um, the early wearable stuff, man, I was buying like this mask I'm wearing on scene right now, or like, um, Several. I bought actually. I bought the whole first round of mass. That, that's what I bought that um, in the beginning, and like I sold. A, I sold a bunch of them, or whatever. But um, as time went on, the price of those went crazy because it's like now they're rarer and rarer and rarer. You know, okay. and uh, on different items within the wearables market. Just just talking about just decentraland. I've seen things go crazy. I've seen things go from, you know, you were able to buy it for this much, and now you're only able to buy it for. 10 times that much you know um and somebody like yourself that, that was in it in crypto from the beginning you can see that there's a certain crypto mindset that doesn't it defies logic you know it's not like no, your normal no. logistics is something that just makes it, sense like, to you no, like crypto um just just like being a kind of a free thinking mindset typically is most people in here mm-hmm. um as well like i know there's a lot of like not really collectors but people who appreciate things or, or like I don't know, like monuments from things or like achievements and, and shit like mm-hmm. that, like bounties, mm-hmm. you know, like devs love bounties mm-hmm. um, and all these things that I'm not only for the aspect of it, but like for the, the accolades to be like, like I found this, like no one could. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. And I don't know, like I've been on eBay for 22 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I've sold like, I sold some weird shit on eBay. I used to sell like <laughs> House Angels and Mafia collectibles. Really? I used to sell a whole bunch of cufflinks. I used to sell a whole bunch of Las Vegas and Cuban collectibles. Mm. Um, I used to sell a whole bunch of Cuban cigars. Mm. Um, so I've, I've just, uh, then I got into soccer cards. Um, I had like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like all first prints okay. um, of the first set. They were worth thousands and thousands. Yeah, um, yeah. And like all these things I flipped. Um, and then literally I found Bitcoin after the soccer cards. I was looking at like soccer coins and I found the Casatius coins. And then I got into Bitcoin and I stopped and I stopped everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. all that I started doing. <laughs> and then that led me exactly to the NFT space. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so it's like I and I see cycles like the soccer cards too. Mm-hmm. They were hot at one point, then you mm-hmm. stopped fizzling out. Some sellers would stop buying, yep. you know, from the manufacturers. You're like, okay, I see this ending. Mm-hmm. So you you mean you'd unload, you'd get out, and then you figure out what's going on next. Yeah, and that exactly. was Bitcoin. And yeah. that was probably the best thing I ever <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From, from absolutely. There. That's funny because you know it, it, was, it was like a similar role for me. I, I learned about Ethereum when, when you were talking about doing the ICO, but I didn't. I was not a financially sound person at that point, so it was like no yeah. chance of me getting in and doing any of that. Um, but I did learn about it, and I thought it was cool. And so you know, moved on with life. You know, had a bunch of ups and downs in life, and and didn't think much about it after that. When I got into Bitcoin, it was like. Uh, Last summer, the last April or something like that, maybe was when I first bought my first Bitcoin, or yep. bit of bit of Bitcoin because definitely didn't spend ten thousand dollars on it. Um, yeah. But then you know, so I started getting into it. I started like learning about. I built a miner. I built an ETH miner, even though uh, I dismantled it. But um, I did build one, 
and then you know I was, I was learning on learning on it and then it really just clicked i saw the interview with you i saw you you talking to rice crypto and um mm-hmm. And I was like, actually, having an interview with him tomorrow. Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, that's awesome, yeah, man. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah. So I saw you talking to Rice Crypto, and I was like, man, this guy knows what is going on. Like, I don't know how to explain that, man. But it was like, it all clicked to me. It was like, okay, this is what's happening. Digital collectibles I'm happy, are. I'm happy you saw the light then, man. That's that's great. Yeah. Well, it was like you know, coming from the gaming background, you know, yeah. understanding like that kind of concept of um, how. Uh, like if you owned your digital, a uh, digital, <laughs> if you owned your yeah. digital item, you know your digital collectible. Well, think of that. Like think of it. All my life since I was a little kid, of all the fucking oh games goodness. that I've ever played, oh if I owned God. those assets and those levels and achievements. Oh, like man. think of that. That's something that the, that right now might be worth like seventy eight thousand dollars to me. I mean, yeah. where all that is just gone. It's gone forever. Yeah, it could be even it's more. I mean, think about it. If, let's say, time. let's say for some reason you were able to own certain things in like Mario One, King Kong, uh, uh, yeah. Donkey like, Kong. I, I probably spent like three hundred dollars in quarters per summer when I was a kid on Street Fighter. Yeah, <laughs> so people like, don't even remember that time period. Like, yeah, yeah, man, like Killer Instinct when that thing was in the in the in the uh, arcade. Like that was it was lines to just get yeah. next. You know, just to have yeah. the next fight. You know, these these are time periods that are that are gone. You know, and now we have at least the collectible to hold on to. You know, so now you have like you know these times like you know you're gonna talk about when one day there'll be whether it's in DCL or whether it's something else you're gonna have like a wild advancement in in this technology, and then you would have all these collectibles, all the all the early stuff like you're like yeah you know I, I had that you know I had the really? the, the first uh, like I have um. I got involved with the uh, the the garbage pail kid stuff. So yes. I was like, I got the first round of garbage pail kid stuff. You know, I was, yeah. like, you know, that's the first. That uh, dropped tomorrow too. I know they, that comes out tomorrow at twelve. Uh, yeah. If anybody in this room or in this chat and in, in gamers hub tomorrow, I, I, I'm actually I'm I'm anticipating it not being the same hype level, because um, I know for myself um, mm-hmm. the, the Tiger King. Um, some people don't know what that is, like mm-hmm. it means and things like that. Yeah, um, but like. The first one, I just it was nostalgic because in eighty, like I had those ones as a kid, you know, yeah, yeah. from eighty five, the real ones. Yeah. Um, but like this one, I the first one I bought was like I want a set. I'm like you mean I want some of the cool cards? Like yeah. I'm going to spend that money there for me. Yeah. Um, like this time, I don't really care to get a set mm. um, and stuff like that. I'm only doing it because I know that I mean I'll keep some empty of some packs, mm. open some, and then try and flip some. Um, yeah. just to be transparent. Um, but I don't really like I don't care if I get a set of them, nor do I want one. Um, yeah, yeah. So I just, if I feel that way, there has to be others like that. So mm-hmm. I can't see the demand being the same for the set than it was the first. I can see it, but I've, I've been, like, you know, I've been watching that market, and that market is going. Like, I, you'd be surprised. Have they, how... they fixed EOS yet? Because n- not to knock EOS, like mm-hmm. I know building these things are, are like, I mean, this is an organic task to do this, yeah, yeah. Um, or like a, a gigantic task. Yeah. Um, but as far as like my experience with with EOS, their marketplace with just everything was mm-hmm. pretty. I don't know. It, it was it was very trying on me. Like it took me. I sold mine in, in lots of like 150 cards on eBay, okay. and then I had to go one by one and find the card out of my like 900 cards. Oh my! And it, I sat here with my wife, like, "There's got to be a better way." And I was like, "Trust me, man. There is." And I thought about it always, and I fucking it's gonna take like three and a half hours to fucking send it. Oh my goodness! Now they have all. Um... I sold two lots. I mean, after the first one, I was like, "Fuck, should I refund oh their money and just goodness. keep it?" They've got uh, they've got like the GPK market. Um, and yeah, but in, the filters though, like if I go to send you something, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't go send me my doubles from A from from duplicates, mm-hmm. like or from from the baseline. So you can't send I can't, like a, a bundle. I have to go through and look through every single yeah, one of them. Yeah, um, and that's like I don't know. That's just I can't believe that they actually expect their like the people who hold those to collect like that. Yeah, especially when you're dealing with cards and with, like people do, they buy. They would want to buy a full set, or they would want to buy. Well, yeah, at first I want to be like, okay, like, do I have a set? Yes, here's mm-hmm. one set. Do I have a second set? No, but you need three to get the set. Like, yeah, yeah, here's yeah. the ones I have two of. Here's ones I have three of. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was expecting. And as a kid, that's the first thing you did with your cards. And with this thing, I was like, fuck, I can't even sort them. There's no filters. And I was like, in my head, I, I was didn't like, even know about the market until. Like I didn't even I bought them and I didn't even know about the market. I didn't know about anything. I just was like same idea. Like I'm you know from the '80s. I was like man, like I like this. You know, so I, I remember you know liking you know garbage pail kids as a kid. I had none of them as a kid, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get some. And I got some. And then later on that night they were sold out. And I was like, well then, you know. Um, yeah. Even now though, this morning I checked the market. and I was like, wow, those things are like 
they're going. You know, they they, they actively have a market that's, that's selling. You know, yes, act, like, every day. You know, well, see, uh, on eBay, on eBay, I think I was actually getting more than their marketplace. Really? Because um, that makes sense. Um, well, I bought about eleven hundred dollars worth. Mm -hmm. I got about forty eight hundred dollars back um, from all the doubles, yeah, and yeah. then I have a full set AMB, and then I have tons and tons of sketch and um, the oh, other ones. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, so I have way more than I ever expected, mm. and I like tripled my money. Wow. Um, so I, I couldn't complain, um, other than sending them was was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't sold a single one of them, so I, I don't even know what it's like to sell them because I just have them. Yeah, bought, see, if, if you if you went through the process, you'd know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I just like, I like the market looks crazy, but I've never even sold a single one of them. So I, and then I ran into, because after I did sell some through the marketplace first, then mm -hmm. I ran in, it's like, you don't have any RAM. And I was like, well, I, like, is that, and then I was like, well, that must be their gas. And I was like, yeah. well, how do I get it? Oh, any? okay, okay. So I, and thankfully, I went into their Discord. I was like, I don't know how to get RAM. And some dude's like, I'll just send you some. And he sent me some and I ran out of that. Oh, and, you know, I was like, shit, wow. you know what I mean? So, and then on the back end, I was like, you know what? There's no filters. I don't know what the fuck the RAM is. Oh, so I was like, man. I'm not going to deal with this. Yeah. yeah. I might just have to hold on to that for a couple of years before I try to yeah. figure yeah. any of that out. I know out. others others in the space kind of voice their opinions. They're like, this is going to be very hard to flip these just because of the restrictions on them. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if you bought them to collect them, you didn't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so it wouldn't have affected that. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's, to me, it was kind of that. It was like, I've always liked them. And as a kid, I never had them. You know, it was just one yeah. of those things I just never had. I just never, you know, maybe I had one or two of the stickers or something like that. But I wasn't much of a collector as a kid. Like, I had a couple of comic books. I still have those somewhere in storage in Connecticut. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I wasn't much of a, a collector. I, I was a type of kid that kind of ruined everything I had, you know? like I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the best thing about NFTs, man. They're always fucking making dirty. You cannot <laughs> ruin them. Yeah, you can't get them dirty. You can't no, no, break no them. No grading involved. No yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, that that's... um. Again, that's the, the value of what we got going on now. So now it's like your your digital collectible, you know, and and yeah. you, you can mark that moment. I talk about like the wearables, like they mark a piece of history. It's like, oh, you know. Well, oh, whenever I see those jerseys in three years, I'll be like, yeah, I remember that. Like the first time we did that, that crazy shit. Yeah. And even jerseys now, like if you have a Beckham, like early jersey with old advertisements on it, some of those companies are bankrupt mm. or they merge, they change names. If you have those with like some crazy, like where they used to have like, I don't know some company that, that like isn't around because they did some stupid shit like politically mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Like those are worth a lot of money, man. Um, so so now I didn't even think about it. I was thinking you were year. like you, you you would be trying to go for these companies to, to succeed. It's almost like it's better if they fail. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, just joking. It's, it's, it's just the, it's just the real life aspect from a collector standpoint. Yeah, like, yeah. You mean if, if if like if you had like I don't know someone who played for the Expos and the Expos weren't right. a baseball team anymore yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? you're yeah. like well shit that's, i mean by default my jersey my hat my cards all went up yeah, all, all worth more because they're not they're never going to be printed again yeah that makes yeah. sense and i had and unfortunately like the sad part about it is i collected tons and tons of steve's job stuff mm -hmm. like i mean like i had hundreds and hundreds of his things i had his business card from like like mid 80s apple and shit like that like what? literally um yeah from from palo alto from the first like when they before they moved to things yeah. And I had like 21 issues of Mac World from 1984 with him on the cover. Um, and the day he passed away, I listed them all. And I pretty much paid my mortgage for a year with that shit. Wow. Um, it was unbelievable. And that, I just, those are the kind of things that uh, that always happen. Like when John Gotti died, I had tons of his stuff. Oh, wow. um, and, sold, and sold that stuff. Um, so yeah, just weird shit like that over the years. It's just, unfortunately, that's what happens with yeah. collectibles when like, you I mean, for example, if an artist died, of course their work goes through the roof um, yeah, because yeah. it's unobtainable and there's never going to be new pieces. They're never um, so it just it, it affects it greatly with things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting thought, you know. Like we, yeah, I, I, something I don't even think about, but you know, especially because we're so, such a new um, industry. But yeah, when things go down, or well, you got to think like there's Bitcoin maps and magazines that I have, and you look through it, like there's 15 ads. Two of those companies exist, um, and, and and the longer that goes on, like. Most people were like, what the hell is that company? You're like, exactly. You mean like, yeah. you, you, you have no you idea never, what this company was. And that. they were a huge company in 2016 in Bitcoin. And that, um, yeah. and it's kind of cool to see that. It's like looking at old like ads now through a light magazine when like it's all cigarette and booze companies and stuff that don't exist anymore. Yeah, the, like, the, the stuff that's yeah. in like some of the old comic books and stuff like that. And you're totally, just like, man. this is not for children, you know? <laughs> but back then <laughs> yeah, it was just like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> like, um... The whole, I saw this documentary and this was like uh, something that really kind of hit me to uh, I'm, I felt like I'm doing the right thing in, in the in the NFT market um, it was like about the 
most valuable baseball card in history is the Honus Wagner. The Honus card. Wagner, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, there's yep. eleven of them because Gretzky bought one. Uh, like yeah, he, well, he, and and that that specific one that Gretzky bought, um, it's like there's a there's a controversy around it that somebody trimmed the edges on it, and that's why how how it was made so sharp. Um, oh, is that right? Yeah, and and then there's a, there's a document. It's a it's a it's a thirty for thirty, but it's a thirty for thirty short. Um, yes. Documentary, and so basically the idea is somebody. Some some uh, I think it was a guy from from like the minting agency. Yeah. A long time ago, took something really small and and trimmed the edges of that one, right? And uh, that's what made it so like pop out to the to the you know to the person, and that's how that's how it was able to be uh, uh, given the the classification of like you know like seven out of ten or eight out of ten for for a card yeah. that old, you know. Um, and so, like that, that's how I ended up getting bought up for that much. Before that was before Gretzky bought it, you know. Uh, this is all like a long time ago, before any of this stuff. But uh, that's how that's how I was able to look like that. And it's still after, you know, after all that controversy, still is worth like two point eight million dollars now, or something yeah. like that. You know, um, I could see I could see it being shady because Bruce McNall was in on that. <laughs> He went. He was like a lawyer. He went to jail for some dodgy stuff. I think that's what. <laughs> so no, no, legitimately, I think that's the guy we're talking about. That, that, that yeah, because Bruce McDonald, he was a lawyer, and if he brought that deal to Gretzky, he was probably in some shady shit. Yeah, yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. I think I believe this is the guy we're Gretzky, talking about, Drew, Drew, Bruce McDonald. Yeah, I'm not. I, 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 I didn't like memorize the whole documentary, but that sounds familiar. Um, yeah. But it, it really kind of gave me the the concept. Like, well, first of all, the, what we were talking about earlier, just like it was on the back of a cigarette carton. Um, the t- yeah, the tobacco card. The ho- yeah. yeah, the the, the actually, I have a tobacco wagon. card from 1939 with Howard Hughes on it. Wow. Um, yeah, pilot, and, yeah, it's like the oldest. Card and card. the only reason why it was like because there was tons of these things minted, but the reason why the Honus Wagner one was was um, uh, special was because he had it taken off. Like for some reason, yeah, either they didn't pay the him. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, well, that's the the, the 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 sweetheart story is he's against the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the reality could be that he just wasn't paid, and he was like, "You better take yeah, my no, shit yeah. down if you're not paying me." You know. Yeah. So uh, yes, but but you know, it, that's what made it rare. And then over time, it's like this thing, like it's like you know, it's from a cigarette carton. You know, this is like not something that is even done anymore. And then on top of that, it's ridiculously rare because it was only you know so many of them made because. There's yeah. millions of the other ones. It was on the back of cigarettes. Like everybody was smoking cigarettes back then. It's now, yeah. you know, but, um, you know, now, like, since he had it taken down, there was actually way less of his version. And then on top of that, 7, 8, 12 survived or whatever it was, you know? Yeah. So. Billy Ripken, actually, um, in, like, the early 90s on an upper deck card. Mm-hmm. Billy Ripken from the Baltimore Orioles, Kyle Ripken's brother. Oh, oh okay. And Billy Ripken. All right. his, his, his buddies put fuck you on the bottom of his back. And and they took a picture of it, and it was they printed like I don't know maybe seven hundred cards um, for that year, and that you could read "fuck you" on the bottom of the back, oh, the black, shit. The black shoe polish. <laughs> um, and then they they figured it out, and they stopped printing them and made a different card. Oh, so those man. the Billy Ripken "fuck you" cards are worth a lot of money, man. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. No, no, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah, we had a version of that in DCL, and it actually got fixed. And I was like, uh, not not that, no no swears or nothing like that. But uh, yeah, yeah. the the sneakers, the um, I think I'm wearing them right now. Um, the the DCL sneakers that uh they look like Chuck Taylors yeah I'm wearing yes that. yes um these things the original mints were um spelled they were misspelled they had a C in them so it was like sneakers spelled with a C K and uh they it was like three hundred of those minted and then um when they came out with the rest of them the rest of the thousand you know, people realized there was a mis- misspelling and then they started, the misspelled one started going for crazy money. <laughs> and I was like, what? I'm looking at the uh, at the, at the the market, I'm like, why are some of these sneakers going for a thousand mana, you know, when, when the other ones are going for 300 or 150 or whatever? Yeah. And um, and somebody was like, yeah, they're misspelled. I'm like, motherfucker, I had those. Like, I had yeah. a lot of those and I sold yeah. mostly all of them for a good amount of money, but not a thousand, you know? And, uh, yeah. You know, it was one of those situations. But then I think they got fixed. I was talking to somebody. I think I was talking to Murph, uh, Murph Jestic, and 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 uh, he was like, "Yeah, they, that 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 misspelling got fixed." You know, so it, um, it is what it is. But it would have been nice to have that kind of like little little thing if you'd have known about it. You know? Yeah, completely. Uh, and for whoever bought them at a thousand, I feel bad. You know, because it's like, wow, you know, you bought you bought them thinking they were going to be like this off, you know, this offhand like thing, and then it, it yeah, it wasn't. You know. <laughs> 
I guess that's the other part of digital collectible digital collectibles is that they you know things like that can be fixed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and again there's there's some projects that, that I had higher hopes on that, that they're panning out to be and other mm -hmm. ones that are surprising me. Uh, oh, like nice. some of the some of them like they're I don't know, I personally don't play them. I think they're uh, maybe like a good idea but but just doesn't interest me. Mm -hmm. um, and other communities like are huge about them. Um so yeah, you never know what's gonna like boom up and like there might be something right now in DCL that we don't even know about. Someone's building quietly mm -hmm. that might come out. Everyone be like, "Holy shit!" That could be it might shock thing, everybody. Yeah. And then people want yeah. to surround themselves and build around it. Um, so yeah, it's. I mean, again, it's like it's crazy early, and I don't, I don't think anyone can really predict what's with, with great accuracy what's going to be happening in the next one to two years. Exactly, but just understanding that something could happen with whatever it may be that you're collecting is uh, is just a good high, like hindsight to have, you know. Totally, and again, like if if I don't know if you put it on. Some things are, are like if you're engaging with that game and you want to play it, that's one thing. But if you're just holding it, um, you know what I mean? Like it's even during Bitcoin, I saw people who were like, no, I'm going to hold it at 20. I'm like, dude, I saw you buy it like $600. And he's like, what are you doing? You know, he's like, like, what kind of returns are you looking for? for Christ's sake? You know, like that. Um, so, you know, and there's some people that are just, they're like, no, man, I'm just holding. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I know there, there should be a time when you're like, I mean, well, if you're making strategy, like 210 yeah, yeah. times your money, it might be a good thing to try and re replicate that and do it again. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I it's like know, I, I sold guess, my, yeah. I sold a bunch of SLP when this thing started going crazy. It, it, it pumped up still like another 100 percent after that, and you know, I was like, oh, yeah. well, whatever. I, and again, there'll always be someone who waited a little bit longer, but someone might have waited too long, and yeah. then they're getting shafted at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, and those, and those, um, you know, they talk about it, it takes the stair, the stairs go up. The elevator goes down, you know? So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or you can go out the window real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, Steve, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, we've been going for about an hour. Uh, super pleasure always to talk to you, man. You're always welcome to come on any of my platforms anytime. Um, like I said, I, I told you in private, you're, you're one of my biggest inspirations in this whole space. And um, I'll always be following you and whatever you got going on. So, of course, you know, if you ever ever have something to release or anything like that, definitely let me know. Um, I will, for sure. Is there anything you wanted to kind of say on the way out to the, to the people watching? Is still got a couple of people watching, for sure. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I would just say um, just check out GameCredits.org. Go to the rewards portal. It's, uh, it's If you just have fun sitting around idle, um, you can just you can make money or, or get something for it. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that... Um, anyone not checking out the digital art scene um, and is just kind of in the NFT and wearable space, I urge you strongly to look at it. Um, you don't have to spend a disgusting amount of money. There's all different aspects and price points to get in that. Um, but yeah, if, if you're already in NFTs, it's kind of natural progression. And it's, I don't know, I think it's going to blow up sooner um, than NFTs, not bigger. Um, well, volume wise, yes, it's being driven by that right now. But um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's what's going to help us as well long term in the NFTs and metaverse space. Yeah. Um, so it's just all around. It's like a trifecta of perfectness. Definitely. Yeah, all right, man. Well, uh, again, thank you very much for everything you've done for me for since day one. Because I know we uh, we spoke a, a little while ago, and uh, like I was telling you on just before we did this one, like so much has happened in between that time, and uh, I can't even yeah, thank you enough. You know, so much appreciated. Cheers, man. We'll keep up the good work. Uh, thank Always you. Always a much. pleasure. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. All right, cheers, man. Let me just stop my. Uh,